Second Baruch, chapter 1 to 5. And it came to pass in the twenty-fifth year of Jeconiah, the king of Judah, that the word of the Lord came to Baruch, son of Neriah, and said to him, Have you seen everything that this people is doing to me? The evils done by the remaining tribes are greater than those done by the ten tribes that were carried away into exile. For the former tribes were forced by their kings to sin, but these two themselves have been forcing and compelling their kings to sin. Therefore, behold, I shall bring evil upon this city and upon its inhabitants, and it will be taken away from before my presence for a time. And I shall scatter this people among the nations, so that they may do good to the nations. And my people will be chastened, but the time will come when they will search for what is able to make their times prosperous. Therefore, I have told you these things so that you may tell Jeremiah, along with all those who are like you, to retire from this city. For your works are like a firm pillar to this city, and your prayers like a strong wall. And I said, O Lord, my Lord, have I come into the world in order to see the evils of my mother? No, my Lord. If I have found favor in your eyes, first take away my spirit, so that I may go to my fathers, and not witness the destruction of my mother. For I am hard pressed from two sides, for I cannot resist you. But my soul also cannot witness the evil of my mother. But one thing I shall say in your presence, O Lord what will happen after these things? For if you destroy your city, and deliver up your country to those who hate us. How will the name of Israel be remembered again? Or how shall anyone ever again speak about your glories? Or to whom will the content of your law be explained? Or will the world return to its natural state? and the age revert to its original silence? And will the multitude of the souls be taken away? And will the nature of man never again be mentioned? And where is everything that you spoke to Moses regarding us? And the Lord said to me, this city will be delivered up for a time, and the people will be chastened for a time, and the world will not be forgotten. Or do you think that this is the city of which I spoke about when I said, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands? It is not this present building that has been constructed in your midst. It is that which will be revealed with me and which was already prepared from the moment I decided to create the garden. And I showed it to Adam before he sinned, but when he transgressed the commandment, it was taken away from him, as well as the garden. And after these things, I showed it to my servant Abraham in the night between the portions of the victims. And again, I also showed it to Moses on Mount Sinai, when I showed him the pattern of the dwelling and all its vessels. And now, behold, it is preserved with me, as well as the garden. Now go and do as I command you. And I answered and said, So therefore, I shall be guilty in Zion? For your haters will come to this place and pollute your sanctuary.
and will carry off your inheritance into exile, and will make themselves masters over those whom you love, and they will depart again to the land of their idols, and will boast before them. And what will you do for your great name? And the Lord said to me, My name and my glory shall last unto eternity. However, my judgment shall assert its rights in its own time. And you shall see with your eyes that the enemy shall not demolish Zion, nor shall they burn Jerusalem but they shall serve the judge for a time. But you go and do everything that I have said to you. And I went away and took with me Jeremiah and Iddo and Sariah and Yabesh and Gedaliah and all the nobles of the people and I led them to the Kidron Valley and told them everything that had been said to me. And they raised their voices, and they all wept. And we sat there and fasted until evening. Chapter 6 to 9 Know what happened on the following day, that behold, a Chaldean army surrounded the city. And in the evening, I, Baruch, left the people. And I went outside and stood by the oak. And I was grieving over Zion and lamented over the exile that had come upon the people. And behold, Suddenly, a strong, unseen force lifted me up and carried me above the wall of Jerusalem. And as I watched, I saw that four angels were standing at the four corners of the city. Each of them held a burning torch in his hands. And another angel began to descend from the heavens and said to them, Hold your lamps, and do not light them until I tell you. Because I was sent first to speak a word to the earth, and then to deposit in it what the Lord the Most High has commanded me. And I saw him descend into the Holy of Holies. And from there he took the veil and the holy ephod, and the mercy seat, and the two tablets, and the holy raiment of the priests, and the altar of incense, and the forty-eight precious stones that adorn the priests, and all the holy vessels of the dwelling. And he said to the earth with a loud voice, Earth, earth, earth! Hear the word of the mighty God, and receive the things which I commit to you, and guard them until the last times, so that when you are ordered, you may restore them, so that strangers may not take possession of them. For the time has arrived when Jerusalem will also be delivered up for a time, until the moment when it is said that it will be restored forever. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up. And after these things, I heard this angel saying to the angels who held the lamps, Now destroy the walls and demolish them to their foundations, lest the enemies boast and say, We have demolished the wall of Zion and we have burned down the place of the mighty God. And they restored me to the place where I once stood. Now the angels did as he had commanded them. And after they had broken up the corners of the wall, 
and the wall had fallen. A voice was heard from within the temple saying, Enter enemies and come adversaries, for he who preserved the house has forsaken it. Then I, Baruch, departed. And it happened after these things that the Chaldean army entered. And they seized the house and everything that was around it. And they carried away the people into exile and killed some of them. And they bound King Zedekiah and sent him to the king of Babel. And I, Baruch, came with Jeremiah, whose heart was found to be pure from sins, and who was not captured when the city was seized. And we rent our garments, and wept, and mourned, and fasted for seven days. Chapter 10 to 12 and it happened after seven days that the word of God came to me and said to me, Tell Jeremiah to depart in order to support the exiles to Babel. You, however, remain here amid the desolation of Zion. And I shall show you after these days what will happen at the end of days. And I spoke to Jeremiah as the Lord commanded me. Then he went away with the people, but I, Baruch, came back and sat in front of the gates of the temple. And I raised the following lamentation over Zion and said, Blessed is he who has not been born, or he who after he was born has died. But as for we who are alive, woe to us, because we see the afflictions of Zion and what has befallen Jerusalem. I shall call the sirens from the sea, and you, Lulin, come from the desert, and you, demons and dragons from the forests, awake! and gird up your loins to mourn, and take up the dirges with me, and mourn with me. You, farmers, do not sow again. And you, O oh earth, why do you give the fruit of your harvest? Keep within you the sweetness of your sustenance. And you, Vine, why do you still give your wine? For an offering will never again be given from you in Zion, and the first fruits will never again be offered. And you, heavens, withhold your due, and do not open the storehouses of rain. And you, sun, Withhold the light of your rays. And you, moon, extinguish the multitude of your light. For why should the light rise again, where the light of Zion is darkened? And you, bridegrooms, do not enter, and do not let the brides adorn themselves with garlands. And you, women, do not pray to bear children, for the barren will rejoice more, and those who have no sons will be glad, and those who have had sons will be sad. For why do they give birth in pains, only to bury in grief? For why should men have sons again? 
Or why should their kind of seed be named again? Where this mother is desolate, and her sons have been carried away into exile. From this time forward, do not speak of beauty any longer, and do not talk about gracefulness. But you, priests, take the keys of the sanctuary and cast them to the highest heaven, and give them to the Lord and say, Guard your house yourself, for behold, we have been found to be false stewards. And you, virgins, who twist fine linen and silk with gold of Ophir, quickly take all these things and cast them into the fire, so that it may carry them to him who made them. And the flame sends them to him who created them, so that the enemies may not take possession of them. Now I, Baruch, say this to you, O Babel. If you had prospered, and if Zion had lived in her glory, it would have been a great sorrow to us that you had been equal to Zion. But now, behold, the grief is unending, and the lamentation is immeasurable. For behold, you are prosperous, and Zion desolate. Who will be judge over these things? Or to whom shall we complain about what has befallen us? O oh Lord, how have you borne it? Our fathers went to rest without grief, and behold, the righteous sleep peacefully in the earth. For they did not know this anguish, nor did they hear about what has befallen us. If only you had ears, O oh earth! And if only you had a heart, O oh dust, so that both of you could go and make an announcement in the netherworld and say to the dead, You are more blessed than we who live. But I shall say as I think, and I shall speak against you, the land that is prospering. The noonday does not always burn, nor do the rays of the sun continually give light. And do not expect, nor hope, that you will always have prosperity and joy. And do not be excessively raised up, and do not oppress. For surely wrath will awaken against you in its own season. For now, it is restrained by long-suffering, as it were, by a rain. And having said these things, I fasted for seven days. Chapter 13 to 15 And after these things, it happened that I, Baruch, was standing on Mount Zion. And behold, a voice came from on high, saying to me, Stand upon your feet, Baruch, and hear the word of the mighty God. Because you have been astonished at what has befallen Zion, you will surely be preserved until the end of times to be for a testimony. This means that if these prosperous cities ever say, why has the mighty God brought this retribution upon us? You and those who are like you, those who have seen this evil and retribution coming upon you and your people in their own time, may say to them, this is so that the nations will be thoroughly punished. And this they may expect. And if they say in that time, when? You will say to them, 
All of you who have drunk the strained wine, now also drink its dregs. For the judgment of the eminent one is without partiality. Therefore, he previously did not spare his own sons, but because they sinned, he afflicted them as his enemies. Therefore, they were once punished that they might be forgiven. But now, you peoples and nations, all of you are guilty because you have trodden down the earth and misused the things that were created in it. For all of you have always been benefited, but you have always been ungrateful. And I answered and said, Behold, you have shown me the courses of times and what will happen after these things. And you have told me that the retribution which you have spoken about will come upon the nations. And now, I know that there are many who have sinned, and who have lived in prosperity, and who have departed from the world. But there will be few nations left in those times to whom your spoken words are able to be spoken. For what is the advantage of this? Or what evil worse than what we have already seen befall us can we expect to see? But I will continue to speak in your presence. What advantage do the knowledgeable have before you? Those who have not walked in vanity like the rest of the nations, and who have not said to the dead, Give life to us, but have always feared you, and have not left your ways. And behold, they have been diligent, and nevertheless, even on their account, you had no mercy on Zion. And if there are others who did evil, Zion should have been forgiven on account of the works of those who did good works, and she should not have been overwhelmed because of the works of those who acted unrighteously. But who, O oh Lord my Lord, will comprehend your judgment? Who will explore the depth of your way? Or who is able to discern the majesty of your path? Who is able to discern your incomprehensible counsel? Or who of those born has ever discovered the beginning or the end of your wisdom? For all of us have been made like a breath. For just as breath ascends involuntarily and vanishes, so it is with the nature of men. They do not depart according to their own will, and they are ignorant of what will befall them in the end. For the righteous rightly have good hope for the end, and without fear they leave this habitation, because they possess a store of good works with you, which is preserved in storehouses. Therefore, they leave this world without fear, and with confidence and complete joy, they expect to receive the world that you have promised to them. But as for us, woe to us who are now being shamefully treated! and who await evils at that time. But you know precisely what you have made of your servants, for we are not able to understand what is good like you, our Creator. But I shall continue to speak in your presence, O Lord, my Lord. In the beginning, when the world, along with its inhabitants, did not yet exist, you devised and spoke with a word. And simultaneously, the works of creation stood before you. 
And you said that you would make a man for this world as a guardian over your works, so that it might be made known that he was not created for the world, but the world for him. And now I see that the world which was made for us, behold, it remains, but we, for whom it was made, depart. And the Lord answered and said to me, You are rightly astonished about man's departure. But your judgment regarding the evils which befell those who sin is incorrect. And with regard to what you have said about the righteous who are taken away and the wicked who are prosperous, and with regard to what you have said, that man does not know your judgment, for this reason, now, listen, and I shall speak to you. Pay attention, and I shall let my words be heard. It is true that man would not have understood my judgment if he had not received the law, and if I had not instructed him in understanding. But now, because he has transgressed, having understanding, he will indeed be punished because of this understanding. And with regard to the righteous, on whose account you said that the world has come. Indeed, what is coming is also on their account. For to them, this world is a struggle and an effort with much trouble. And accordingly, what is to come will be a crown with great glory. Chapter 16 to 20 And I answered and said, O Lord, my Lord, behold, the present years are few and evil, and who, in this short time, is able to inherit what is immeasurable? And the Lord answered and said to me, With the Most High no account is taken of much time, nor of a few years. For what did it profit Adam that he lived 930 years and transgressed what he was commanded? Therefore, the great amount of time that he lived did not profit him, but it brought death and cut off the years of those who were born from him. Or what did it harm Moses that he lived only 120 years, and because he subjected himself to him who created him, brought the law to the descendants of Jacob and lit a lamp for the nation of Israel? And I answered and said, The man who lit the lamp has taken from the light, and there are few who imitated him. But many whom he has lit have taken from the darkness of Adam and have not rejoiced in the light of the lamp. And he answered and said to me, Because of this, he appointed a covenant for them at that time and said, Behold, I have set before you life and death. And he called the heavens and the earth to witness against them. For he knew that his time was short, but that the heavens and the earth will endure forever. Yet after this death, they sinned and transgressed, although they knew that they had the law to reprove them, as well as that light in which nothing could err and also the witnessing spheres, and me. And now, with regard to everything that exists, it is I who judge. But you, do not think about these things in your soul, and do not be afflicted because of past things. For now it is the end of time that should be considered, whether it be business, prosperity, or shame, and not its beginning. For if a man prospers in his youth, yet is treated shamefully in his old age, he forgets all the prosperity he once possessed. And further, if a man is treated shamefully in his youth, yet is prosperous towards his end, he no longer remembers his shame. And listen further, even if everyone had prospered continually since the day death was decreed against the transgressors, 
and it was destroyed in the end, everything would have been in vain. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, and the times will hasten more than the former, and the seasons will hasten more than those that have passed, and the years will pass more quickly than the present ones. Therefore, I have now taken Zion away, so that I might more speedily visit the world in its own season. Now therefore, hold fast to your heart everything that I have commanded you, and seal it in the recesses of your mind. And then I shall show you my mighty judgment and my unsearchable ways. Therefore, go and sanctify yourself for seven days, and do not eat bread and do not drink water and do not speak to anyone. And after this time, come to this place, and I shall reveal myself to you. And I shall speak truth to you, and I shall command you with regard to the course of times. For they are coming and will not delay. Chapter 21 Then I went from there and sat in the Kidron Valley, in an earthen cave. And there I sanctified my soul. And I ate no bread, but I was not hungry. And I drank no water, but I was not thirsty. And I stayed there until the seventh day as he commanded me. And afterward, I came to the place where he had previously spoken with me. And it happened at sunset, that my soul received many thoughts. And I began to speak in the presence of the Mighty One, and said, O oh, hear me, you who created the earth, the One who fixed the firmament by the Word, and fastened the height of the heavens by the Spirit. The one who in the beginning of the world called what did not yet exist, and they obey you. You who, with your sign, gave commandments to the air, and have seen the things which are yet to come, as well as those which have passed. You who, with great thoughts, rule over the hosts standing before you, and who, with indignation, rule the countless holy ones, who are flame and fire, whom you created from the beginning, those who stand around your throne. For all this exists for you alone, so that you may create at once everything that you want. You are the one who causes the raindrops to fall by number upon the earth. And you alone know the consummation of times before it has arrived. Honor my prayer. For you alone are able to sustain all those who exist and those who have passed away and those who are yet to come those who sin, and those who are righteous. Since you are the Living One, the Inscrutable One. For you are the only Living One, the Immortal One, and the Inscrutable One, and you know the number of men. And although in the course of time many have sinned, Many others have been righteous. You know where you have preserved the end of those who have sinned, or the consummation of those who have been righteous. For if this present life, which all men possess, is the only one that exists, nothing could be more bitter than this. For of what profit is strength that changes into weakness? Or of food in abundance 
that changes into famine, or beauty that changes into ugliness. For the nature of man is always changeable. For what we once were, we are no longer. And what we are now, we shall not always remain. For if an end of all things had not been prepared, their beginning would have been in vain. But tell me about everything that comes from you, and enlighten me regarding what I ask you. How long will the corruptible remain? And how long will the time of mortals be prosperous? And when will those who pass away in this world no longer be polluted by the great wickedness? Therefore, mercifully command and accomplish everything that you have said that you would do, so that your power will be recognized by those who believe that your long-suffering is weakness. And now, to those who do not know, but who have seen what has befallen us in our city until now, show them that these things are in agreement with the long-suffering of your power. For on account of your name, you have called us a beloved people. Therefore, from now, everything is in a state of mortality. Therefore, reprove the angel of death, and let your glory appear, and let the greatness of your beauty be known, and let the netherworld be sealed, so that from this time forward it may not receive the dead. And let the storehouses of the souls restore those who are enclosed in them. For many years of desolation have passed since the days of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all those who were like them who sleep in the earth. Those on whose account you have said that you have created the world. And now, show your glory quickly, and do not postpone what was promised by you. And it happened, when I had finished the words of this prayer, that I became very weak. Chapter 22 to 30 And afterward it happened, that behold, the heavens were opened, and I saw, and strength was given to me. Then a voice was heard from on high, and it said to me, Barak, Barak, why are you troubled? Who starts on a journey and does not complete it? Or who will be comforted making a voyage by sea, unless he can reach port? Or he who promises to give a present to someone, is it not a theft unless it is fulfilled? Or he who sows the earth, does he not lose everything unless he reaps its fruit in its season? Or he who plants a plant, does the planter expect to receive fruit from it, unless it grows until its appointed time? Or a woman who has conceived, does she surely not kill her infant when she bears untimely? Or he who builds a house, can it be called a house unless it is provided with a roof and is finished? Tell me this first. And I answered and said, No, Lord, my Lord. And he answered and said to me, Then why are you troubled about what you do not know? And why are you restless about things you possess no knowledge of? For as you have not forgotten men who now exist and those who have passed away, so I remember those who are yet to come. 
For when Adam sinned and death was decreed against those who were to be born, the great number of those who would be born was set. And for that number, a place was prepared where the living might dwell and where the dead might be preserved. Therefore, no creature will live again unless the previously declared number is reached. For my spirit is the creator of life, and the netherworld receives the dead. And further, it has been granted to you to hear about the things that follow these times. For truly, my redemption has drawn near and is not as far away as before. For behold, the days are coming and the books will be opened in which are written the sins of all those who have sinned. And moreover, the storehouses will also be opened in which the righteousness of all those who have been righteous in creation is brought together. For it will happen at that time that you shall see, and many with you, the long suffering of the Most High, which lasts throughout all generations, who has been long suffering toward all who are born, both those who sinned and those who are righteous. And I answered and said, but behold, O Lord, no man knows the number of things that have passed away, nor of those that are yet to come. For behold, I indeed know what has befallen me, but I do not know what will happen to our enemies, or when you will visit your works. And he answered and said to me, You will also be preserved until that time until that sign which the Most High will bring about for the inhabitants of the earth at the end of days. Therefore, this will be the sign. When horror seizes the inhabitants of the earth, and they fall into many tribulations, and moreover, when they fall into great torments. And because of their great tribulations, it will happen that they will say in their thoughts, The Mighty One no longer remembers the earth. And when they lose hope, it will happen that then the time will awake. And I answered and said, That coming tribulation, will it last a long time? In that distress, will it embrace many years? And he answered and said to me, That time is divided into twelve parts and each part is reserved for its appointed task. In the first part, there shall be the beginning of commotions, and in the second part, the slaughtering of the great, and in the third part, the fall of many into death, and in the fourth part, the sending of the sword, and in the fifth part, famine and the withholding of rain, and in the sixth part, and in the seventh part, earthquakes and terrors, and in the eighth part, a multitude of phantoms and the attacks of demons, and in the ninth part, the fall of fire, and in the tenth part, rape and much oppression and in the eleventh part, injustice and unchastity. And in the twelfth part, disorder arising from a conglomeration of everything that has been previously mentioned. For these parts of that time are reserved, and will be mixed, one with another, and they will minister to each other. For some of these parts will withhold a portion of themselves while taking from others, and some will accomplish their own portion as well as that of others. Hence, those who live on earth in those days will not understand that this is the end of times. But at that time, whoever understands will be wise. For the measure and the calculation of that time is two parts a week of seven weeks. And I answered and said, it is good for a man to come and see those times, but it is better for him not to come to those times, lest he fall. 
But I shall also say this. Will he who is incorruptible despise those who are corruptible? And will he despise whatever befalls those who are corruptible, so that he might look only to those who are not corruptible? But, O Lord, if these things which you have spoken to me beforehand do indeed come to pass, then let me know this as well, if indeed I have found favor in your eyes. Is it only in one place, or in only one part of the earth, where these things will come to pass? Or will they be experienced by the whole earth? And he answered and said to me, Whatever happens at that time will befall the whole earth. Therefore, all who are alive will experience it. For at that time, I shall only protect those found in this land in those very days. And it will happen when everything that should come to pass in those parts has been accomplished, that the Anointed One will begin to be revealed and Behemoth will be revealed from its place, and Leviathan will arise from the sea, those two great monsters which I created on the fifth day of creation, and which I shall have kept until that time. And then they will be nourishment for all who remain. The earth will also yield its fruits ten thousandfold, and on each vine will be a thousand branches, and each branch will produce a thousand clusters, and each cluster will produce a thousand grapes, and each grape will produce a core of wine. And those who hungered will rejoice, and moreover they will see marvels every day. For winds will go out from before me every morning to bring the fragrance of aromatic fruits, and clouds at the end of the day to distill the dew of health. And it will happen at that time, that the storehouse of manna will again descend from on high, and they will eat of it in those years because these are the ones who will have arrived at the consummation of time. And it will happen after these things, when the time of the Anointed One's appearance has been fulfilled, that he will return with glory. Then all who have fallen asleep in hope of him will rise. And it will happen at that time that those storehouses preserving the number of the souls of the righteous will be opened, and they will come out, and the multitudes of the souls will appear together in one assembly of one mind. And the first will rejoice, and the last will not be grieved. For they know that the time has come of which it is said that it is the end of times. But when the souls of the wicked see all these things, they will waste away even more. For they will know that their torment has come and that their perditions have arrived. Chapter 31 to 34 And it happened after these things that I went to the people and said to them, Assemble all of your elders to me and I shall speak words to them. And they all assembled in the Kidron Valley. And I answered and said to them, Hear, O Israel, and I shall speak to you. And give ear, O seed of Jacob, and I shall instruct you. Do not forget Zion, but remember Jerusalem's anguish. For behold, the days are coming when everything that is will become the prey of corruption, and it will be as though it had never been. But as for you, if all of you prepare your hearts to sow into them the fruits of the law, it shall protect you in the time in which the Mighty One shall shake the entire creation. For after a short time, the building of Zion will be shaken 
in order that it might be rebuilt. But that building will not remain. But after a time, it will again be uprooted. It will remain desolate for a time. And afterwards, it is necessary for it to be renewed in glory and perfected into eternity. Therefore, we should not be so distressed about the evil that is now come but much more distressed about what is yet to be. For when the Mighty One renews His creation, there will be a trial greater than these two tribulations. And now, do not draw near to me for a few days, and do not seek me until I come to you. And it happened, after having said all these words to them, that I, Baruch, went my way. And when the people saw me leaving, they raised their voices and lamented, and said, Where are you going from us, Baruch? And are you going to abandon us as a father who forsakes his children as orphans and leaves them? Are these the commands given to you by your friend, Jeremiah the prophet, when he said to you, Look after this people during the time of my absence, while I prepare the rest of our brethren in Babel, against whom the sentence has been declared that they should be carried away into exile. And now, if you abandon us, it would have been better for all of us to die before you, and then that you should leave us. And I answered and said to the people, Far be it from me to forsake you, or to withdraw from you, but on your behalf, and on behalf of Zion, I shall go to the Holy of Holies to inquire of the Mighty One, so that I may receive some further illumination. And after these things, I shall return to you. Chapter 35-43 to 43. And I, Baruch, went to the holy place, and sat on its ruins, and wept, and said, Oh, that my eyes were springs, and my eyelids a fountain of tears! For how shall I lament over Zion, and how shall I mourn over Jerusalem? For at the place where I am now prostrate, the high priest used to offer sacrifices, and placed on it incense of fragrant aromas. But now, our glory has become dust, and the desire of our soul is ashes. And after I had said these things, I fell asleep at that place, and I saw a vision in the night. And behold, there was a forest of trees planted on the plain, and it was surrounded by high mountains and rugged rocks, and the forest occupied much space. And behold, a vine arose in front of it and from under it a fountain ran peacefully. And now, that fountain came to the forest and churned into great waves. And those waves submerged the forest and suddenly uprooted the entire forest and overthrew all the mountains that surrounded it. And the height of the forest became low, and the apex of the mountains became low. And that fountain became so strong that it left nothing of the great forest except one cedar. When it had also cast that one down, 
it destroyed the entire forest and uprooted it, so that nothing was left of it, nor could its place be recognized anymore. Then that vine arrived with the fountain in peace and in great tranquility, and it arrived at the place that was not far from the cedar that had been cast down, and they brought that cedar to it. And as I was watching, I saw that the vine opened its mouth and spoke and said to the cedar, Are you not the remaining cedar from the forest of wickedness? Because of you, wickedness remained and has been performed during all these years, but never goodness. And you kept conquering what did not belong to you, and you did not even show compassion to what did belong to you. And you kept extending your power over those who were living far from you, and those who do draw close to you, you kept in the nets of your wickedness. And you always uplifted your soul like one who could not be uprooted. But now your time has hastened and your hour has come. Therefore, O oh cedar, follow the forest which has departed before you, and become dust with it, and let your ashes be mixed together. And now, recline in anguish, and rest in torment until your last time comes, when you will return to be tormented even more. And after these things, I saw that the cedar was burning, and the vine growing, while it and everything around it became a plain full of unfading flowers. And indeed, I awoke and arose, and I prayed and said, O oh Lord, my Lord, you are the one who always enlightens those who conduct themselves with understanding. Your law is life, and your wisdom is the right way. Therefore, explain to me the interpretation of this vision. For you know that my soul has always walked in your law, and that from my earliest days, I did not depart from your wisdom. And he answered and said to me, Barak, this is the interpretation of the vision which you have seen. As you have seen the great forest surrounded by high and rugged mountains, this is the word. Behold, the days will come when this kingdom that once destroyed Zion will be destroyed, and it will be subjected to the kingdom that will come after it. Then again, after a time, this second kingdom will also be destroyed. And another, a third will arise. And that one will also possess power in its own time, then will be destroyed. And after these things, a fourth kingdom will arise whose power will be more harsh and more evil than those before it and it will seize a multitude of times like the forest on the plain, and it will rule the times, and it will exalt itself more than the cedars of Lebanon. And in it, the truth will be hidden, and all who are polluted with unrighteousness will flee to it like evil beasts flee and creep into the forest. And when the time of its consummation has approached for it to fall, it will happen at that time, that the dominion of my anointed one, which is like the fountain and the vine, will be revealed. And when it is revealed, it will uproot the multitude of its host. And concerning what you have seen, the tall cedar that remained of that forest, and regarding the words that you heard spoken to it by the vine, that is the explanation. The last ruler who was left alive at that time will be bound, whereas his entire host will be put to the sword. And they will carry him up to Mount Zion, 
and my anointed one will convict him of all his wicked deeds. And he will gather together and set before him all the works of his hosts. And afterwards he will kill him and protect the rest of my people who will be found in the place that I have chosen. And his dominion will last forever until the world of corruption has ended and until the previously mentioned times have been fulfilled. This is your vision and this is its interpretation. And I answered and said, For whom and for how many will these things be? Or who will be worthy to live in that time? For I shall now speak before you everything that I think, and I shall ask you about the things which I meditate upon. For behold, I see many of your people who have separated themselves from your statutes, and who have thrown off from them the yoke of your law. But further, I have seen others who have forsaken their vanity, and who have fled for refuge under your wings. Therefore, what will happen to them, or how will the last time receive them? Or perhaps their time will surely be weighed? And will they be judged accordingly as the scale indicates? And he answered and said to me, I shall also show you these things. As for what you said, to whom and to how many will these things be? The good that was previously mentioned will be for those who have believed, and the opposite of these things will be for those who have despised. And as for what you said in regard to those who have drawn near, and to those who have withdrawn, this is the explanation. As for those who originally subjected themselves, but later withdrew and mingled themselves with the seed of the mingled peoples, their former time was considered as mountains. And as for those who originally did not know life, but later knew it exactly and mingled with the seed of the peoples who have separated themselves, their latter time will be considered as mountains. And time will succeed to time, and season to season, and one will receive from another. And then, with a view to the end, everything will be compared according to the measurement of times and the hours of seasons. For corruption will take away those who belong to it, and life those who belong to it. And the dust will be called and told, Give back what does not belong to you, and raise up all that you have kept until its own time. But you, Baruch, direct your heart towards what has been spoken to you, and understand what has been revealed to you, because you have many consolations which will last forever. For you will depart from this place and leave the regions that are now before your eyes. And you shall forget what is corruptible, and shall never again remember what is among mortals. Therefore, go and command your people, then come to this place, and afterward fast seven days, and then I shall come to you and speak with you. Chapter 44 to 47 And I, Baruch, went from there and came to my people. And I called my firstborn son, and my friend Gedaliah, and seven of the elders of the people, and said to them, Behold, I go to my fathers in accordance with the way of the whole earth. But you do not withdraw from the way of the law, but guard and admonish the remaining people, lest they withdraw from the Mighty One's commandments. For you see that he whom we serve is righteous, and that our Creator is impartial. And all of you, look at what has befallen Zion, 
and what has happened to Jerusalem. For the Mighty One's judgment will be made known, as well as His ways which are inscrutable and right. For if you endure and persevere in His fear, and do not forget His law, the times will again change into good for you, and they will participate in the consolation of Zion. For whatever is now is nothing, but whatever is in the future will be very great. For everything that is corruptible will pass away, and everything that is mortal will depart, and everything that is present will be forgotten, and no remembrance will remain of the present time that is polluted by evils. For he who runs now runs in vain, and he who is prosperous will soon fall and be humiliated. For what will be in the future, that will be our object of desire, and what comes later, this is what we shall hope for. For it is a time that does not pass away. And the hour which will remain forever is coming. And the new world is coming. Those who enter into its beginning are not carried back to corruption by it. But it has no mercy upon those who depart into torment. And those who are living in it are not carried to perdition by it. For those are the ones who will inherit this time that has been spoken of, and the inheritance of the promised time belongs to them. These are the ones who have acquired for themselves treasures of wisdom, and stores of insight are found with them, and they have not withdrawn from mercy, and they have preserved the truth of the law. For the coming world will be given to them, but the habitation of the remainder, who are many, will be in the fire. Therefore, admonish the people as much as you can, for this is our task. For if you instruct them, you will make them alive. And my son, along with the elders of the people, answered and said to me, Did the Mighty One humiliate us to such an extent that he will take you away from us so quickly? And shall we truly be in darkness? And will there no longer be any light for that people who are left? For where shall we again investigate the law? Or who will distinguish between death and life for us? And I said to them, I cannot resist the throne of the Mighty One. Nevertheless, Israel will not lack a wise man, nor the tribe of Jacob a son of the law. But only prepare your hearts, so that all of you may obey the law, and be subject to those who, in fear, are wise in understanding. And prepare your souls, so that none of you shall depart from them. For if you do these things, good tidings, about which I previously told you, will come to you, and you will not fall into the torment which I previously testified to you about. But with regard to the word that I was to be taken, I did not make it known to them at that time, not even to my son. And after I had left, having dismissed them, I returned from there and said to them, Behold, I go to Hebron, for the Mighty One has sent me there. And I arrived at that place where the word was spoken to me, and I sat there and fasted for seven days. 
Chapter 48 And it happened after the seventh day that I prayed before the Mighty One and said, O Lord, you summon the coming of the times, and they stand before you. You cause the display of the power of the ages to pass away, and they do not resist you. You arrange the course of the seasons, and they obey you. You alone know the length of the generations, and you do not reveal your secrets to many. You make known the multitude of the fire, and you weigh the lightness of the wind. You explore the extent of the heights, and you scrutinize the depths of the darkness. You care for the number of those who will pass away, and they are preserved. And you prepare a house for those who are yet to be. You remember the beginning which you created, and you do not forget that destruction which is yet to come. With signs of fear and indignation, you command the flames, and they change into spirits. And with the word, you bring to life what does not exist. And with mighty power, you hold what does not yet come. You instruct the creation with your understanding and you give wisdom to the spheres so that they minister according to their positions. Innumerable armies stand before you, and at your sign peacefully minister according to their positions. Hear your servant, and give ear to my petition. For we are born in a short time, and in a short time we return. But with you, hours are like times, and days like generations. Therefore, do not be angry with man, for he is nothing. And do not take account of our works, for what are we? For behold, by your gift we come into the world, and we do not leave of our own will. For we did not say to our parents, Beget us, nor have we sent to the netherworld and said, Receive us. Therefore, what is our strength that we should bear your wrath? Or what are we? that we should endure your judgment. Protect us in your compassion and help us in your mercy. Look upon the small ones who submit to you and save all those who draw near to you. And do not destroy the hope of our people and do not cut short the times of our help. For this is the nation which you have elected, and these are the people with whom you found no equal. But now I shall speak before you, and I shall talk as my heart thinks. In you, we have put our trust, for behold, your law is with us, and we know that we shall not fall as long as we keep your statutes. For we shall always be blessed, at least we have not mingled with the nations, for we are all one celebrated people, we who received one law from the One, and that law which is among us will help us, 
and that excellent wisdom which is in us will support us. And when I had prayed these things, I grew very weak. And he answered and said to me, You have prayed sincerely, Barak, and all your words have been heard. But my judgment demands its own, and my law demands its rights. For I shall answer you from your own words, and I shall speak to you from your own prayer. For it is as follows. Nothing will be corrupted unless it acted wickedly, allowing itself to forget my goodness and to refuse my long suffering. For this reason, you will surely be taken up as I told you before. And that time which brings affliction will arise, for it will come and pass away with enormous vehemence, and it will be turbulent, arriving in the heat of indignation. And it will be in those days that all the inhabitants of the earth will live with each other in peace, because they do not know that my judgment has drawn near. For at that time, there will not be many wise men to be found, and also the intelligent will be but a few. Furthermore, even those who know will be silent more and more. And there will be many rumors and not a few tidings, and the works of the phantoms will be visible, and not a few promises will be recounted, some idle and others affirmed. And honor will be changed into shame, and strength will be humiliated to contempt, and confidence will be broken down, and beauty will become contemptible. And many will say to many at that time, Where has the multitude of intelligence hidden itself? And to where has the multitude of wisdom departed? And while someone is meditating on these things, Envy will arise within those who did not think much of themselves, and passion will take hold of those who were peaceful, and many will be stirred up by wrath to injure many. And they will raise armies to shed blood, but in the end, they will perish together with them. And it will happen in that very time, that openly, before the eyes of all mankind, that the times will change, because in all those previous times, they polluted themselves and caused oppression, and each man walked in his own works and did not remember the law of the Mighty One. Therefore, a fire will consume their thoughts, and in a flame, the meditations of their hearts will be tested. For the judge will come and will not hesitate, for each of the inhabitants of the earth knew when they were transgressing, but because of their pride, they did not know my law. But many will surely weep at that time, yes, over the living more than over the dead. And I answered and said, O oh Adam, what have you done to all those who were born from you? And what will be said of the first Eve who obeyed the serpent? For this entire multitude is going to corruption, and countless are those whom the fire devours. But once more I shall speak in your presence. You, O Lord my Lord, know what is within your creature. For long ago you commanded the dust to produce Adam, and you know the number of those who are born from him and how they have sinned before you, those who existed and who did not confess you as their creator. And concerning all of these, their end will put them to shame, and your law, which they transgressed, will repay them on your day. 
But now, let us cease discussing the wicked, and inquire about the righteous, and I will recount their blessedness, and I shall not be silent in celebrating their glory which is kept for them. For surely, as all of you have endured much labor in the short time that you live in this transistory world, so you will receive great light in that world which has no end. Chapter 49-52 to 52. Nevertheless, I again ask of you, O mighty one, yes, I shall ask for favor from him who created all things. In what form will the living live in your day? Or how will their splendor remain after that time? Will they perhaps retain this present form and put on these chained members, which are presently involved in evils and by which evils are accomplished? Or will you perhaps change these things which have been in the world, as well as the world itself? And he answered and said to me, Barak, listen to this word, and write down in the memory of your heart everything that you shall learn. For the earth will surely give back the dead at that time. Currently, it receives them in order to preserve them, not making any change in their form. But as it has received them, so it will give them back. And as I have delivered them to it, so it will also raise them. For at that time it will be necessary to show the living that the dead have come to life again, and that the departed have returned. Then, when those who currently know each other at this present time will, at that time, recognize each other, it will happen that my judgment will be strong and those things that have previously been spoken of will come. And it will happen after this, when that appointed day has gone by, that both the appearance of those who are found to be guilty, as well as the glory of those who are righteous, will be changed. For those who are presently acting wickedly shall suffer torment at that time. And as they suffer, their appearance will be made worse than it is at present. Furthermore, the glory of those who have presently been made righteous by my law, those who possessed understanding in their life, and those who planted the root of wisdom in their heart, at that time, their splendor will be glorified by transformations, and the appearance of their face will be changed into the light of their beauty so that they may be able to acquire and receive the undying world which is promised to them. Therefore, above all these things, those who will come will lament at that time, because they despised my law, and stopped up their ears lest they hear wisdom and receive understanding. Therefore, when they see that those whom they are presently exalting themselves over will, at that time, be more exalted and glorified than themselves, then both these and those will be transformed, the latter into the splendor of angels, and the former into startling visions and horrible shapes, and they will waste away even more. For first they will see, and then they will depart to be tormented. However, those who have been saved because of their works, and to whom the law has been a present hope, and understanding and expectation, and wisdom and trust, they will see marvels displayed at their proper time. For they shall see that world which, currently, is invisible to them, and they will see a time which, currently, is hidden from them. And time will no longer age them, 
for they will dwell in the heights of that world, and they will be made like the angels and be made equal to the stars. And they will be changed into any form they desire, from beauty into loveliness, and from light into the splendor of glory. For the extents of the garden will be spread out before them, and the beautiful majesty of the living creatures beneath the throne will be shown to them, as well as all the hosts of the angels, those who presently are held fast by my word, lest they show themselves, and who are restrained by my command, so that they may stand firm at their places until the time of their arrival has come. And then, the excellence of the righteous will surpass that of the angels. For the first will receive the last, those whom they were expecting, and the last will receive those whom they used to hear had passed away. For they have been delivered from this world of tribulation and have set down the burden of anguish. Therefore, for what have men lost their life? And for what have those who were on the earth exchanged their soul? For previously, they chose for themselves this present time that cannot pass away without anguish. And they chose for themselves that time of whose issues are full of lamentations and evils. And they have denied the world that does not age those who come to it. And they have rejected the time of glory so that they are not coming to the honor of which I have previously told you. And I answered and said, How can we forget those for whom at that time woe is reserved? And why then are we mourning once again for those who die? Or why do we weep for those who depart to the netherworld? Let the lamentations be reserved for the beginning of that coming torment. And let the tears be stored up for the arrival of that future destruction. But even in the face of these things, I will speak. And concerning the righteous, what will they do now? Rejoice in the suffering that all of you now suffer? For why do any of you look for the decline of your enemies? Prepare your souls for what is reserved for you, and prepare your souls for the reward which is laid up for you. And after I had said this, I fell asleep there. Chapter 53 to 54 and I saw a vision, and behold, a cloud was coming up from the great sea. And as I was watching it, I saw that it was entirely filled with both black and white waters, and there were many colors in those waters. And something like great lightning was appearing at its top. And I saw the cloud passing swiftly in quick courses, and it was covering the whole earth. And it happened after these things, that the cloud began to pour its contained waters upon the earth. And I saw that the waters descending from it were not all of the same likeness. For at first, they were very black for a time, and afterward, I saw that the waters became bright, but there were not as many. And after these, I again saw black waters, and after these, bright again, then black again, and bright again. Now this happened twelve times, but the black were always more numerous than the bright. And it happened at the end of the cloud that, behold, 
it poured down black waters that were much darker than all the waters that had been before, and fire was mingled with them. And at the regions where those waters descended, they wrought devastation and destruction. And after these, I saw how the lightning, which I had seen at the top of the cloud, seized it and pressed it down to the earth. Now that lightning shone so exceedingly that it lit up the whole earth. And it healed the regions where the final waters had descended and where they had wrought devastation. And it occupied the whole earth and took dominion over it. And after this, as I was watching, I saw that twelve rivers were ascending from the sea. And they began to surround the lightning and to become subject to it. And because of my fear, I awoke. And I sought the Mighty One and said, You alone, O Lord, from of old, know the depths of the world, and what will happen in the times that you bring about by your word. And against the works of the inhabitants of the earth, you hasten the beginnings of the times. And you alone know the ends of the seasons. You are the one for whom nothing is hard. But you are, however, the one who easily accomplishes everything by a single sign. You are the one for whom both the depths and the heights come together, and whose word the beginnings of the ages serve. You are the one who reveals to those who fear you what is prepared for them, so that from now on they may be comforted by you. You show your mighty works to the unknowing, you tear down the enclosure around the ignorant, and you enlighten the darkened, and you reveal the secrets to the spotless who in faith have subjected themselves to you and your law. Since you have shown this vision to your servant, also reveal its interpretation to me. For I know that I have received answers to the subjects that I have asked you about, and you gave me a revelation about what I asked, revealing to me with what voice I should praise you, and from which members I should cause praises and glorification to go up to you. For if my members were mouths, and the hairs of my head voices, even then I would not be able to properly praise you, nor fittingly honor you, nor would I be able to recount your praise, nor to express the excellence of your beauty. For what am I among men, or what is my significance among those who are more excellent than I? that I have heard all these marvelous things from the Most High, and innumerable promises from Him who created me. Blessed is my mother among those who bear, and praised among women is she who bore me. For I shall not be silent in praising the Mighty One, but with a praising voice I shall recount His marvelous works. For who is able to imitate your marvelous deeds, O God, or who understands your deep thought of life? For with your counsel you govern all the creatures created by your right hand, 
and you have established every fountain of light at your side. And you have prepared the treasures of wisdom beneath your throne. And those who do not love your law are justly perishing. And the torment of judgment is awaiting those who have not subjected themselves to your power. For although Adam sinned first and has brought untimely death upon all men, yet each of those men who has been born from him has prepared for his own soul the coming torment. And each of those men has also chosen for himself the coming glories. For truly, the man who believes will receive reward. But now, as for you, all you wicked who are now living, turn yourselves to destruction, for you will be visited suddenly, since you have previously rejected the understanding of the Most High. For his works have not taught you, nor have you been persuaded by the artifice of his creation, which has always existed. Therefore, Adam is not the cause, with an exception of his own soul, but each of us has been the Adam of his own soul. But explain to me, O Lord, what you have revealed to me, and inform me about what I asked you. For at the end of the world, vengeance will be demanded upon those who have done wickedness in accordance with their wickedness, and you will glorify the faithful in accordance with their faithfulness. For those who are among your own, you rule, and those who sin, you blot out from among your own. Chapter 55 to 68 And it happened, when I had finished the words of this prayer, that I sat down there under a tree to rest in the shade of its branches. And I was surprised and was astonished. And in my thoughts, I pondered about the multitude of the goodness which the sinners who are on earth have rejected from themselves, and about the great torment which they have despised, even though they knew that they should be tormented because of the sin they had committed. And while I was pondering these and similar things, behold, Remiel, the angel who is set over true visions, was sent to me. And he said to me, Why does your heart trouble you, Baruch? And why does your thought disturb you? For if you are already this perturbed, merely hearing about the judgment, what will happen when you see it with your eyes openly? And if you are already this overwhelmed at your mere anticipation of the day of the Mighty One, what will happen when you arrive at its coming? And if you are this fully distraught at the mere words of the announcement of the torment of the foolish, how much more when this event itself reveals marvelous things. And if you are grieved merely upon hearing the names of the good and evil things which will come at that time, what will happen when you see what the Majesty will reveal, who will convict some and cause others to rejoice? Nevertheless, since you have sought for the Most High to reveal to you the interpretation of the vision that you have seen, I have been sent to tell you this, that the Mighty One has certainly made known to you the course of the times that have passed, as well as those that are yet to pass, in His world, from the beginning of its creation until its consummation, the times which are known by deceit and those by truth. For as you saw a great cloud which came up from the sea and went and covered the earth, this is the duration of the age created by the Mighty One, when he took counsel in order to create the age. 
And it happened, when the word had gone forth from his presence, that the duration of the age was standing as something small, and it was established in accordance with the abundant intelligence of him who sent it forth. And as for the black waters that you first saw on the top of the cloud, which were the first to descend upon the earth, these are the transgression which Adam, the first man, committed. For when he transgressed, untimely death came into being, and mourning was identified, and suffering was prepared, and pain was created, and toil was kindled, and pride began to arise, and the netherworld began incessantly demanding to be renewed with blood. And the conception of children came about, and the passion of parents was produced, and the loftiness of men was humiliated, and the goodness vanished. Therefore, what could be blacker and darker than these things? This is the beginning of the black waters which you have seen. And from these black waters, black were again born, and darkest darkness was produced. For he who became a danger to his own soul, even became a danger to the heavenly messengers. For at the time when he was created, they enjoyed freedom, and some of them came down and mingled themselves with women. Therefore, those who did so were tormented in chains. But the rest of the innumerable multitude of heavenly messengers restrained themselves. And those living on earth perished together through the waters of the flood. Those are the first black waters. And after these, you saw bright waters. These are Abraham's fountain and his generations, and the coming of his son and of his grandson, and of those who are like them. For at that time the law, even without being written, was in force among them. And at that time the works of the commandments were accomplished, and the belief in the coming judgment was brought about. And at that time the hope of the world that will be renewed was built, and the promise of the future life to come was planted. These are the bright waters which you have seen. And the third waters which you have seen, which are black. These are the mingling of all sins which the nations committed afterward, after the death of those righteous men and the wickedness of the land of Egypt, in which they acted wickedly in the hard labor with which they forced their sons to labor. Yet these also perished at the end. And the fourth waters which you have seen, which are bright, these are the coming of Moses, and of Aaron, and of Miriam, and of Yahshua son of Nun, and of Caleb, and of all those who are like them. For at that time, the lamp of the eternal law illuminated all those who sat in darkness. This lamp announced to those who believe the promise of their reward, and to those who deny the tormenting fire reserved for them. But also at that time, the heavens were shaken from their place. Those heavens beneath the throne of the Mighty One were severely shaken when he brought Moses to himself. For he showed him many warnings together with the principles of the law and the end of time, as he also showed to you. And likewise, he showed him the pattern of Zion, along with its measurements which was to be made after the pattern of the present sanctuary. At that time, he also showed him the measures of the fire, as well as the depths of the abyss, and the weight of the winds, and the number of the raindrops, 
and the suppression of wrath, and the abundance of long-suffering, and the truth of judgment, and the root of wisdom, and the richness of understanding, and the fountain of knowledge, and the height of the air, and the greatness of the garden, and the consummation of the ages, and the beginning of the day of judgment, and the number of the offerings, and the worlds which have not yet come, and the mouth of Gehenna, and the station of vengeance, and the place of faith, and the region of hope, and the picture of future torment, and the multitude of the innumerable heavenly messengers, and the hosts of the flame, and the splendor of lightnings, and the voice of the thunders, and the orders of the chief messengers, and the storehouses of the light, and the changes of the times, and the perusals of the law. These are the fourth bright waters you have seen. And the fifth waters, which you have seen pouring down, which are black. These are the works wrought by the Amorites, and the invocations of their incantations which they made, and the wickedness of their mysteries, and the mingling of their pollutions. But even Israel was polluted with sins in the days of the judges, although they saw many signs having come from him who created them. and the sixth waters which you have seen, which are bright. These are the time in which David and Solomon were born. And at that time the building of Zion took place, and the dedication of the sanctuary, and the mass shedding of blood of the nations that sinned at that time. And at that time many offerings were offered at the dedication of the sanctuary. And at that time, peace and tranquility reigned. And wisdom was heard in the assembly, and the riches of understanding were magnified in the congregations. And the holy festivals were fulfilled in happiness and in much joy. And at that time, the judgment of the rulers was seen without deceit, and the righteousness of the commandments of the Mighty One was accomplished in truth. And at that time the land received mercy, and since its inhabitants did not sin, it was praised above every land. And at that time the city of Zion ruled over every land and region. These are the bright waters you have seen. And the seventh waters which you have seen, which are black. These are the perversion conceived by the council of Jeroboam, who took counsel to make two golden calves. And these are also all the iniquities that were iniquitously accomplished by the kings who succeeded him, and the curse of Jezebel, and the idolatry practiced by Israel at that time and the withholding of rain, and the famines that occurred until women ate the fruits of their womb, and the time of their exile which befell the nine and a half tribes, because they lived in many sins. And Shalmaneser, the king of the Assyrians, came and carried them away into exile. But concerning the nations, much could be said, how they always acted unrighteously, and wickedly, and how they never proved themselves to be righteous. These are the seventh black waters you have seen. And the eighth waters which you have seen, which are bright. These are the righteousness and the integrity of Hezekiah, king of Judah, and the grace which came upon him. 
For at that time Sennacherib was stirred to destroy, and his wrath roused him, as well as the multitude of the nations allied with him, in order to destroy. Moreover, when Hezekiah the king heard that that Assyrian king was devising to come and seize him and destroy his people, the remaining two and a half tribes, and that he also wanted to destroy Zion, then Hezekiah trusted in his works and hoped in his righteousness and spoke with the mighty one and said, Pay attention! Behold, Sennacherib is ready to destroy us and he will boast and be uplifted when he has destroyed Zion. And because Hezekiah was wise, the mighty one heard him. And because he was righteous, he paid attention to his prayer. And then the mighty one commanded Remiel, his messenger who is speaking with you. And I went forth and destroyed their multitude, whose chiefs alone numbered 185,000 and each of them had an equal number at his command. And at that time I burned their bodies within, but I preserved their clothes and their arms on the outside, so that even more of the Mighty One's marvelous works might be seen, and that through it his name might be mentioned throughout the entire earth. And so Zion was saved, and Jerusalem was delivered, Israel was also freed from tribulations, and all those who were in the Holy Land rejoiced, and the name of the Mighty One was glorified so that it was spoken of. These are the bright waters you have seen. And the ninth waters which you have seen, which are black. These are all the wickedness that existed in the days of Manasseh, son of Hezekiah. For he acted very wickedly, and killed the righteous, and perverted judgment, and shed innocent blood, and violently polluted married women, and overturned altars, and abolished their offerings, and drove away the priests so they were unable to minister in the sanctuary. And he made a statue with five faces. Four of them looked, one in each direction of the four winds, and the fifth was on the top of the statue, so as to challenge the zeal of the Mighty One. And then wrath went forth from the Mighty One's presence, so that Zion should be uprooted, as has also happened in your day. But also the judgment went out against the two and a half tribes, so that they also should be carried away into exile as you have now seen. And the impiety of Manasseh increased to such a degree that the glory of the Most High removed itself from the sanctuary. Therefore, at that time, Manasseh was called the impious one and finally his abode was in the fire. For although the Most High had heard his prayer, in the end, when he fell into the brazen horse, and the brazen horse was melted, it served as a sign to him regarding the hour. For he had not lived perfectly, since he was not worthy, but the sign was given to him that he might henceforth know by whom he should be punished at the end. For he who is able to benefit is also able to punish. Therefore, in this way Manasseh acted impiously, and he thought that the Mighty One would not call these things to account during his time. These are the ninth black waters you have seen. and the tenth waters which you have seen, which are bright. These are the purity of the generation of Josiah, the king of Judah, who is the only one in his time who subjected himself to the Mighty One with all his heart and all his soul. He purified the land from the idols 
and sanctified all the vessels that had been polluted, and restored the offerings to the altar, and raised the horn of the holy, and exalted the righteous, and honored all those who were wise with understanding. And he brought the priests back to their ministry, and destroyed and removed the magicians and enchanters and necromancers from the land. And he not only killed the impious who were living, but they also removed the bones of the dead from the tombs and had them burned with fire. And he established the festivals and the Sabbaths with their holy practices, and he burned the polluted with fire. And as for the lying prophets who deceived the people, these he also burned with fire. The people who obeyed them while they lived were cast by him into the Kidron Valley, and he heaped stones upon them. And he was zealous with the zeal of the Mighty One, with all his soul, and he alone was strong in the law at that time, so that he left no one uncircumcised, or anyone who acted wickedly in the whole country all the days of his life. Now he shall receive an eternal reward, and in the last time he shall be honored with the Mighty One more than many. For on his account, and on account of those who are like him, the precious glories which were spoken to you earlier have been created and prepared. These are the bright waters which you have seen. And the eleventh waters which you have seen which are black. These are the disaster that has now befallen Zion. Do you think that in the Mighty One's presence there is no mourning among the heavenly messengers because Zion is delivered up in this way? And behold, the nations rejoice in their hearts, and the crowds are before their idols and say, She who has often trodden down others, has herself been trodden down, and she who has subjugated has herself been subjugated. Do you think that the Most High rejoices in these things, or that his name is glorified? But how will it be with his righteous judgment? But after these things, those scattered among the nations will be taken hold of by tribulations and live in shame in every place. For as far as Zion is delivered up, and Jerusalem laid to waste, the idols in the cities of the nations will prosper, and the smoke's vapor arising from the incense of the law's righteousness is extinguished in Zion. And everywhere in the region of Zion, behold, there is the smoke of impiety, But the king of Babel will arise, the one who has now destroyed Zion, and he will boast over the people. And in his heart he will make haughty declarations in the presence of the Most High. But he too will fall at last. These are those black waters. And the twelfth waters which you have seen which are bright. This is the word. For after these things, there will come a time when your people will fall into such a distress that they will all be in danger of perishing together. Yet they will be saved and their enemies will fall before them. And in time, they will have much joy. And at that time, after a short interval, Zion will be rebuilt, and its offerings will be restored, and the priests will return to their ministry, and the nations will also come to honor it, but not as fully as before. But it will happen after these things, that there will be the fall of many nations. These are the bright waters you have seen. Chapter 69 to 76. 
With regard to the final waters which you have seen, which are blacker than all those before them, those which followed the twelfth, which were collected together, they apply to the whole world. For from the beginning the Most High made a division, for He alone knows what will happen in the future. For with regard to the evils of the coming impieties that would be wrought before Him, He foresaw six kinds. And with regard to the good works of the righteous that would be accomplished before Him, He foresaw six kinds in addition to those that He Himself would accomplish at the end of the world. Therefore, these are not black waters with black, nor bright with bright, for this is the consummation. Therefore, hear the interpretation of the final black waters, which will follow the black waters. This is the word. Behold, the days are coming, when the time of the world has ripened, and the harvest of its evil and good seeds has come. And it will happen at that time that the Mighty One will bring confusion of spirits and consternation of heart over the earth and its inhabitants and its rulers. And they will hate one another and provoke one another to fight. And the base will rule over the honorable, and the ignoble will be extolled over the illustrious, and many will be delivered to the few. And those who are nobodies will rule over the strong, and the poor will have more than the rich, and the impious will exalt themselves over the brave, and the wise will be silent, and the foolish will speak. And the thought of men will not be realized then, nor the counsel of the strong, nor will the hope of those who hope be realized. And when those predicted things have come to pass, then confusion will fall upon all men. And some of them will fall in war, and some of them will perish in tribulations, and some of them will be hindered by their own. Then the Most High will give a sign to those peoples whom He has previously prepared and they will come and wage war with the rulers who will remain at that time. And it will happen that he who saves himself from the war will die in an earthquake, and he who saves himself from the earthquake will be burned by fire, and he who saves himself from the fire will perish by famine. And it will happen that anyone who saves himself and escapes from everything that has been previously said, both those who have won and those who have been overcome, will all be delivered into the hands of my servant, the Anointed One. For the whole earth will devour its inhabitants. And the Holy Land will have mercy on its own, and it will protect its inhabitants at that time. This is the vision which you have seen, and this is its interpretation. For I have come to tell you these things, because your prayer has been heard by the Most High. Now also hear about the bright lightning which comes at the end following these black waters. This is the word. After the signs have come, of which I have previously told to you, when the nations become confused and the time of my anointed one comes, he will call all nations, and some of them he will spare, and some of them he will kill. Therefore, these things will befall the nations which will be spared by him. Every nation that has not known Israel and has not trodden down the seed of Jacob will indeed live. And this is because some from every nation will be subjected to your people. But all those who have ruled over you, or have known you, will be delivered up to the sword.
And it will happen that after he has brought low everything which is in the world, and has sat down in eternal peace on the throne of the kingdom, then joy will be revealed, and rest will appear. And then healing will descend in dew, and disease will vanish, and anxiety and anguish and lamentation will pass away from among men, and joy will encompass the entire earth, and no one will ever again die untimely, nor will any adversity take place suddenly. And judgment and condemnations and contentions and revenges and blood and passions and envy and hatred and all such things will go into condemnation at the time when they are uprooted. For these are the things that have filled this world with evils, and because of them the life of man has been greatly troubled. And the wild beasts will come from the forest and serve men, and the asps and dragons will come out of their holes to subject themselves to a child. And women will no longer have pain when they give birth, nor will they suffer torment when yielding the fruits of their womb. And it will happen in those days that the reapers will not grow weary, nor will the builders be worn out from work, because the products will shoot out speedily on their own, together with those who work on them in full tranquility. For that time is the consummation of what is corruptible and the beginning of what is incorruptible. Therefore, everything that was previously said will happen in it. Therefore, it is far away from the evil things and near to what is undying. This is the bright lightning which followed the final dark waters. And I answered and said, Who can equal your goodness, O Lord? for it is incomprehensible. Or who can fathom your mercies, which are without end? Or who can comprehend your intelligence? Or who can narrate the thoughts of your spirit? Or who of those born can hope to arrive at these things, unless he is one to whom you are merciful and gracious? For assuredly, if you were not merciful to men, those who are under your right hand, they would be unable to come to these things. For only those who are named among the numbered can be called. But if we who exist certainly know the reason why we have come, and if we subject ourselves to him who brought us out of Egypt, then we shall come again and remember the things which have passed away, and we shall rejoice with regard to what has occurred. But if we do not presently know the reason why we have come, and do not recognize the sovereignty of him who brought us up from Egypt, then we shall come again and seek after the things which have occurred at present, and shall be painfully grieved because of the things which have happened. And he answered and said to me, Since the revelation of this vision has been explained to you as you requested, hear the word of the Most High, that you may know what will happen to you after these things you will surely depart from this world, nevertheless not to death, but to be preserved unto the consummation of the times. Therefore, go up to the top of that mountain, and all the regions of this land will pass before you, as well as the likeness of the inhabited world, and the summit of the mountains, and the depth of the valleys, and the depths of the seas, and the number of rivers, so that you may see what you are leaving and to where you are going. Now this will happen after forty days. Therefore go now, during these days, and instruct the people as much as you are able, 
so that they may learn so as not to die in the last time, but may learn so that they might live in the last times. Chapter 77 And I, Baruch, went away from there and came to the people, and assembled them together from the greatest to the least. And I said to them, Hear, all you sons of Israel! Look how many you are who remain of the twelve tribes of Israel! For to you and to your fathers the Lord gave the law above all nations. And because your brothers have transgressed the commandments of the Most High, He brought vengeance upon you and upon them. And He did not spare the first only, but He also gave the latter into exile and did not leave a remnant of them. And look, you are here with me. Therefore, if you make your ways straight, you will also not go away as your brothers went away, but they will come to you. For he whom you honor is merciful, and he in whom you hope is gracious and true, so that he will do good to you and not evil. Have you not seen what has befallen Zion? Or do you perhaps think that the place itself has sinned, and for this reason that it has been destroyed? Or that the country itself has done some crime, and for this reason that it has been delivered up? And are all of you unaware that because of you who did sin, the one who did not sin was destroyed? And that because of those who acted wickedly, the one who has not gone astray has been delivered up to enemies? And the whole people answered, and they said to me, Everything that we can remember of the good things the Mighty One has done to us, we shall remember. And what we do not remember, He and His mercy knows. Yet do this for us, your people. Also, write a letter of teaching and a scroll of hope to our brothers in Babel, so that you may also strengthen them before you depart from us. For the shepherds of Israel have perished, and the lamps that gave light are extinguished, and the fountains from which we used to drink have withheld their streams. We are now left in darkness, and amid the trees of the forest, and in the aridness of the desert. And I answered and said to them, Shepherds and lamps and fountains come from the law. And though we depart, the law remains. Therefore, if you gaze upon the law and are intent upon wisdom, then a lamp will not be absent, and a shepherd will not give way, and a fountain will not dry up. Nevertheless, as all of you have asked me, I shall also write to your brothers in Babel, and I shall send it by means of men. And likewise, I shall write to the nine and a half tribes and send these letters by means of a bird. And it happened on the twenty-first day of the eighth month that I, Baruch, came and sat down under the oak in the shadow of its branches. And no one was with me, I was alone. And I wrote two letters. One I sent by means of an eagle to the nine and a half tribes, and the other I sent by means of three men to those who were in Babel. And I called an eagle and spoke the following words to him. You have been created by the Most High to be higher than any other bird. But now, go and do not tarry in any place, 
nor enter into a nest, nor perch on any tree, until you have flown over the breadth of the many waters of the Euphrates River, and have come to the people who live there, and drop this letter down to them. For remember, at the time of the flood, Noah received the fruit of the olive tree from a dove when he sent it forth from the ark. And also, the ravens served Eliah by bringing food to him as they were commanded. Also, Solomon, in the time of his kingship, whenever he wanted to send a letter or was in need of anything, he commanded a bird and it obeyed him as he commanded it. And now, do not be reluctant, and do not deviate to the right nor to the left, but fly and go straight away, that you may preserve the command of the Mighty One as I have told you. Chapter 78 to 81 these are the words of the letter which Baruch, son of Neriah, sent to the nine and a half tribes which were across the river, in which were written the following things. This is what Baruch, son of Neriah, says to the brothers who were carried away into exile. Grace and peace be with you. I remember, my brothers, the love of him who created us, who loved us from the beginning, and who never hated us, but, on the contrary, chastised us. And truly, I know, are we not all the twelve tribes bound by one exile, as we also descend from one father? Therefore, I have been the more diligent to leave you the words of this letter before I die, so that you may be comforted with regard to the evils which have befallen you, and so that all of you may also be grieved with regard to the evils which have befallen your brothers, and then further, so that you may realize that his decreed judgment against you to be carried away into exile is a righteous judgment. For what you have suffered is disproportion to what you have done, in order that you may be found worthy of your fathers in the last times. Therefore, if you deem that what you have now suffered is for your good, in order that you may not be condemned at the end and be tormented, then you shall receive everlasting hope. And if, above all, you purge your hearts from the idle air for which you went away from here. For if you do these things, he shall continually remember you. He is the one who, on our behalf, always promised to those who were more excellent than ourselves that he will never forget or forsake our seed. But with much mercy, he will reassemble all those who were dispersed. Therefore, my brothers, learn first what befell Zion, that is, how Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, came up against us. For we have sinned against him who created us, and have not observed the commandments that he commanded us to keep. And yet, he has not chastised us as we deserved. For what befell you, we also suffer, even more, for it befell us as well. And now, my brothers, when the enemies had surrounded the city, angels were sent from the Most High, and they demolished the fortification of the strong wall and he destroyed the solid iron corners which could not be dislodged. Nevertheless, they hid the holy vessels, lest they be polluted by the enemies. And when they had done these things, they immediately left the following to the enemies, the demolished wall, 
and the plundered house, and the burned temple, and the people who were overcome because they were delivered up. Lest the enemy should boast and say, We have overcome to such an extent that we have even destroyed the house of the Most High. They have also bound your brothers, and carried them away to Babel, and have caused them to live there. And we have been left here with very few. This is the tribulation about which I write to you. For truly I know that the inhabitants of Zion were a consolation to you. As long as you knew that they were prosperous, this was more important than the tribulation you endured being separated from them. But also hear the word of consolation. For I was mourning over Zion, and I asked for mercy from the Most High, and said, Will these things continue for us until the end, and will these evils befall us always? And the Mighty One acted according to the multitude of His graces, and the Most High acted according to the magnitude of His mercy. And He revealed a word to me, so that I might be comforted, and He showed me visions, so that I might never again be anguished. And He made known to me the mysteries of the times, and showed me the coming of the seasons. Chapter 82 to 84 Therefore, my brothers, I have written to you that you may find comfort with regard to the multitude of tribulations. For all of you know that our Creator will surely avenge us on all of our enemies, according to everything which they have done against us and among us. And also, that the consummation prepared by the Most High is near, and that His grace is coming, and that the fulfillment of His judgment is not far off. For at the present, we see the multitude of all the nations' prosperity, while they have acted wickedly, but they will be like a vapor. And we behold the multitude of their power, while they act impiously. But they will be made like a drop. And we see the strength of their power, while they resist the Mighty One every hour. But they will be counted like spittle. And we ponder about the glory of their majesty, while they do not keep the statutes of the Most High but they will pass away like smoke. And we think about the beauty of their gracefulness while they are soaked in pollutions, but they will fade away like withering grass. And we ponder about the strength of their cruelty while they do not remember the end, but they will be broken like a passing wave. And we note the pride of their power, while they deny the goodness of God by whom it was given to them. But they will vanish like a passing cloud. For the Most High will certainly hasten His times, and He will certainly bring about His seasons. And He will certainly judge those who are in His world and he will truly inquire into everything with regard to all their sinful works. And he will certainly investigate the secret thoughts and what is stored up in the inner chambers of each one of man's members. And he will make those things manifest in the presence of everyone with blame. Therefore, let none of these present things enter into your heart, but on the contrary, let us be expectant, since what was promised will come. And we should not look upon the delight of the present nations, but let us remember what has been promised to us in the end. 
for the ends of the times and of the seasons will surely pass away, together with everything that is in them. The end of the age will then show the great power of its ruler when everything comes to judgment. Therefore, all of you should prepare your hearts for what you have previously believed, lest you should be excluded from both worlds, being carried away into exile here and being tormented there. For what exists now, or what has passed away, or what will come, in all these things, neither is the evil fully evil, nor even is the good fully good. For every kind of health that now exists is changing into diseases. And every might that now exists is changing into weakness. And every power that now exists is changing into impotencies. And every youthful energy is changing into old age and consummation. And every graceful beauty that now exists is changing into withering and ugliness. And every infantile pride that now exists is changing into humiliation and shame. And every haughty glory that now exists is changing into silent shame. And every delight and splendor that now exists is changing into silent ruin. And every joy and delight that now exists is changing into rejection and ruin. And every prideful clamor that now exists is changing into still dust. And every rich possession that now exists is changing into the netherworld alone. And every seizing desire that now exists is changing into involuntary death. And every lustful desire that now exists is changing into tormenting judgment. And every deceitful pretense that now exists is changing into a truthful refutation. And every ointment sweetness that now exists is changing into judgment and condemnation. And every lying friendship is changing into silent defamations. Therefore, since all these things are now happening, do you think that they will not be avenged? But the consummation of everything will come to truth. Now, while I still live, I gave you knowledge. For I have said that all of you should, above all, learn the commandments of the Mighty One, in which I shall instruct you. And before I die, I shall set before you some of the commandments of His judgment. Remember, that in the past, Moses called the heavens and the earth to witness against you and said, If you transgress the law, you shall be dispersed. But if you keep it, you shall be planted. And he also spoke other things to you when all of you were twelve tribes together in the desert. And after his death, you cast them away from you. And therefore, what has been predicted has come upon you. And now, Moses spoke to you before these things befell you. And behold, they have befallen you, for you have forsaken the law. Behold, I also say to you after you have suffered, that if you obey the things which I have said to you, you shall receive from the Mighty One everything which has been stored up and preserved for you. Therefore, 
let this letter be a witness between me and you, that you may remember the commandments of the Mighty One, and that it also may serve as my defense in the presence of Him who has sent me. And remember Zion and the Law, and the Holy Land and your brothers, and the Covenant and your fathers, and do not forget the festivals and the Sabbaths, and pass on this letter and the traditions of the law to your children after you, as your fathers also handed them down to you. And always ask and pray diligently with all your soul that the Mighty One may be reconciled with you, and that he may not count up the multitude of your sins, but remember the integrity of your fathers. For if he does not judge us according to the multitude of his mercy, woe to all of us who are born. Chapter 85 to 87 Further, know that in former times and in former generations, our fathers had helpers, righteous prophets and holy ones. Moreover, we were in our own land, and they helped us when we sinned, and they intervened for us with him who had created us, since they trusted in their works. And the Mighty One heard them and purged us from our sins. But now, the righteous have been assembled, and the prophets are sleeping. We too have left the land, and Zion has been taken away from us. And now we have nothing, except for the Mighty One and His Law. Therefore, if we direct and dispose our hearts, we shall receive everything which we lost, tremendously multiplied. For whatever we lost was subjected to corruption, and whatever we receive will not be corruptible. Therefore, I have also written to our brothers in Babel, so that I may attest these things to them as well. And everything that I have previously told you should be before your eyes always, since we are still in the spirit of the power of our liberty. And further, the Most High is also long-suffering towards us here, and he has shown to us what is to come, and has not concealed from us what will happen at the end. Therefore, before the judgment exacts its own, and truth of what is rightfully hers, let us prepare our soul that we may possess and not be possessed, and that we may hope and not be put to shame and that we may rest with our fathers and not be tormented with those who hate us. For the youth of this world has passed away, and the vigor of creation is already exhausted, and the advent of the times is very near, indeed they will have passed by. And the pitcher is near to the cistern, and the ship to the port, and the journey's course to the city, and life to its consummation. And further, prepare your souls so that, after you have sailed and disembarked from the ship, you may find rest and not be condemned once you have arrived. For behold, the Most High will bring all these things to pass, there will never again be an opportunity for repentance, nor a limit to the times, nor a duration of the seasons, nor a change of ways, nor an opportunity for prayer, nor sending up petitions, nor acquiring knowledge, nor giving love, nor opportunity for a soul to repent, nor supplications for offenses, nor prayers of the fathers, nor intercession of the prophets, 
nor help of the righteous. For there is the sentence of judgment to corruption, the way to the fire, and the path that leads to glowing coals. That is why there is one law through one, one world, and an end for all those who dwell in it. Then he will preserve those whom he is able to forgive, and he will purge them from sins. And at the same time, he will destroy those who are polluted with sins. Therefore, when you receive my letter, read it carefully in your assemblies, and meditate upon it, in particular on the days of your fasts. And remember me by this letter, as I also, in the same way, remember you by it, and always. And it happened after I had finished all the words of this letter, composing it carefully until the end, that I folded it, and sealed it carefully, and bound it to the neck of the eagle. And I let it go, and sent it away. The End of the Letter of Baruch, Son of Neriah